I hope y'all are having a great day and today I'll be reviewing I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. I've heard only amazing things about Jandy Nelson ever since The Skies Everywhere came out because everyone read and loved that book. I didn't really have any intention of reading it because the summary kind of made me feel a little bit weird. But anyway, based on what everyone else was saying, I knew that she was a great writer. Then I'll Give You the Sun came out and everyone read this and everyone loved this and I really wanted to read it but I never really got around to it for some reason. Then I learned that it won the Prince Award and that really surprised me and told me, whoa, Sophia, you need to read this book. So I did, and I loved it. I actually read this as an ebook, and I just checked this copy out of the library just because I wanted a physical copy of it to hold in this review, and that's the kind of crazy that I am. But yes, let me tell you what this brilliant book is about. I'll Give You the Sun is obviously a pretty acclaimed novel about two twins, Noah and Jude. Jude is a girl, by the way. Before I read this book, I didn't know Jude was a girl. They are very in tune with each other. They kind of complete each other, and they're just very, very close. But then a family tragedy occurs that kind of tears the twins apart, and they lose that special connection. And so now they're kind of distant. And this book is set up in alternating point of views in a format that's kind of similar to a then and now situation, where Noah, as a 13 to 14 year old boy, narrates the then section, meaning before the tragedy, and Jude, as a 16 year old girl, in the present narrates the now section meaning after the tragedy and the book is written in alternating point of views so we spend one chapter in then and then another in now and then go back to then and so on and so forth so like I said before Noah tells the story of before the tragedy back when the twins are still pretty close but even though it's before the tragedy you can still see how the twins are gradually starting to grate on each other and ruin each other and Jude tells the story of after the tragedy now when they're distant and as her storyline goes along you get to see that the twins are beginning to to reconcile with each other and they attempt to rebuild that connection. I thought this book was a contemporary but it actually has hints of magical realism almost which was very unexpected and it really lends this book a magical whimsical quality that I very much adored. This story is just so so beautiful. The arcs of the characters are fantastic and the way all the character storylines begin to weave in with one another was really interesting. Noah and Jude are fantastic characters. They're so so developed and they have so many layers. It's interesting it's interesting to see the difference in both of the main characters between Noah's narration and Jude's narration because on either sides of that time gap, they're so different. The chapters of this novel are pretty lengthy, so there aren't that many of them. Later on in the book, the chapters start to end with cliffhangers, which was so aggravating. And even if I skipped ahead to the next chapter that would be from the same narrator, for example, if Jude's chapter ended on a cliffhanger, I would skip Noah's chapter and look at the start of the next Jude chapter, and it wouldn't even pick up from the cliffhanger. Yeah! Ah, oh, that was infuriating. I do think I enjoyed Noah's chapters more just because I loved Noah as a character more than I liked Jude. Also, I was completely obsessed with Noah's romantic relationship. It was so cute and electric and oh my god, I just I loved it so much. Jude also has a romantic relationship and I enjoyed that as well, but definitely not as much as I enjoyed Noah's because Jude's is more typical YA, whereas Noah's just felt really special to me. Also, speaking of Noah and romance, Noah is gay, so yay for diversity. Outside of Noah's romance, another reason I enjoyed Noah's chapters more is the writing. The writing in Noah's chapters is so special spectacular. It's very abstract and metaphor heavy, kind of like Tahera Mafi's, but in Jenny Nelson's case, it actually worked for me. I know a lot of people love Tahera Mafi's writing and they say that it's like super beautiful, but personally, I'm not really a fan. I think sometimes Mafi's figurative language misses beautiful and instead lands on absurd. But I am not reviewing Tahera's books right now. I'm reviewing Jenny Nelson's and Jenny Nelson's writing I loved. I thought Jandy Nelson's prose was breathtaking. As I mentioned before, I read this as an ebook, so I highlighted so many awesome quotes. That being said, the writing style is definitely not for everyone. Just like Tahedda's writing is not for me, Jandy Nelson's writing might not be for you. But in my opinion, I thought Noah's chapters were incredible. The writing in Jude's chapters is great too, but I don't think it held as much power. Both twins have something that's very unique to them in their chapters. For example, Noah loves art and painting, so his chapters are littered with these hypothetical portraits with 
these descriptive titles. And this is because as Noah takes in the world around him, he paints in his mind. So he visualizes these paintings that he could possibly create and he creates a title to go along with them that perfectly captures his perception of the events that are taking place. And these painting titles really help narrate the story because they very much express exactly what Noah is feeling. It's also a very creative and unique aspect to this book. Similarly, Jude also has something unique in her chapters. Jude is obsessed with this Bible that was gifted to her by her late grandmother and it's filled with superstitions. So anytime a plot event occurs, Jude will also insert a superstition that correlates with whatever just happened. And I don't know if I'm explaining these quirks correctly, but when you read this book, which I really, really, really hope you do, you'll see what I mean. I said this in my Goodreads review and emotionally I would give this book all the stars. Emotionally I would give this book the sun. Ah, you see what I did there? But when I take into account how rushed the ending was and how almost aggravatingly predictable the plot was, I do have to drop this rating down to like maybe a four and a half stars. This book is definitely one of my new favorites. I think it's a must read. I loved it so much. I loved the writing. I love the characters. I love the story. Jandy Nelson absolutely slays at perfectly capturing a realistic and emotional family dynamic. I'm so glad this book won The Prince because I really, really think it deserves it. I know I'm praising this book a lot, but I just seriously love it so much. That's it for the non-spoiler section. So if you haven't read this book, what are you doing? Go read it. It's fantastic. I recommend this book with all my heart. But yeah, if you haven't read I'll Give You the Sun, I'm gonna advise you to leave now. I'm gonna go into spoilers in three, two, one. Now, I'm obsessed with Noah and Brian. I think they're the cutest thing in the world. I don't know what happened to my voice right then, but ugh, moving on. When Noah shouted that Brian was gay in front of Courtney, I just, oh, ah, oh, it was so cringeworthy. I was like, Noah, please stop. You're gonna regret it. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. But he did it. Jeez, Noah, that's not okay. You can't just do that. I mean, I love Noah to death regardless, but seriously, that was not cool. Jude and Oscar, or should I say Oscar, were interesting. They were very intense considering they didn't even really know each other. And also their age gap kind of threw me off. Jude is 16, Oscar's 19, Jude is in high school, Oscar's in college, and as a general rule, I'm not a really big fan of relationships that reach across the gap between high school and college students. But, of course, there are exceptions to every rule. And since Jude and Oscar are practically like prophesized to be together. I guess they're an exception. I thought basically everything about this plot was predictable. The only thing that surprised me was that Guillermo was the one who sent in the photos of Jude's sand sculptures to CSA. I wasn't expecting that. But everything else, like the mother having an affair with Guillermo, Jude ruining Noah's chances of getting in, etc. That was all easy to see coming. Oh wait, something that really surprised me and almost had me suspending my disbelief actually was when Jude googled Brian and she learned that Brian became this gay baseball star person who kind of revolutionized the way professional sports looked at sexual orientation. Also, he got into Stanford and attended Stanford a year earlier than what was expected under a baseball scholarship. I wasn't expecting that. I loved Guillermo a lot. I thought he was a lot of fun and he brought such an interesting dynamic to the story. I just love how all the characters were connected to one another. Like they're all magnets being drawn together. It's so wonderful to read. I just, I don't know why I hit myself with that. I don't know I did it again. I'm just... I do think the ending was super, super rushed. Everything fell into place at once, and Brian was so easily won over, he magically came back, and everything worked out so perfectly in a matter of a few pages. Everything worked out so well by the end that it was almost a little bit displeasing. Like, even the dad was so quickly back to normal and was starting to play jazz music again, and I understand that every single one of these things, every single bow at the end of these storylines have explanations as to why they ended up that way, but I just thought the quick and perfect ending was too quick and perfect. But that aside, I cannot express how much I love this book. There's so many details in this book that I just loved. Like how the dad would lecture Noah about being a functional umbrella, and how the mom was always telling Jude not to be that girl, and Jude spitting on Zephyr, and the uninhibited way Brian and Noah kissed in the forest. This book was just so good. But that's it for me. Let me know if you agree or if you disagree. I would love to know your thoughts on I'll Give You the Sun. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, and Happy reading. Goodbye!